Hello, my name is Rafael Fujita. I am PhD student at Ribeirão Preto College of Nursing and also a member of Biomechanics and Motor Control Laboratory at the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. I'm here to present the abstract titled The Pre-Exhaustion Method Seems Ineffective to Increase Electromyography Activity. So, the strength training is practiced through several exercises, including single and mood joint exercise. And the exercise order influences the magnitude of EMG activity. And generally, the trains begin with multi-articular exercise in order to enhance the effects of strength training. Differently, the muscle pre-exhaustion involves exercising the same muscle group to the point of concentric muscle failure using single joint exercise immediately before mood joint exercise. The literature has shown that the influence of pre-exhaustion on EMG activity of target muscle are divergent. Some studies have found that pre-exhaustion increased the EMG on target muscle, while others pointed a decrease in this activity. Still, other studies also have shown an increased EMG activity in accessory muscle without alteration of agonist muscle. Even with substantial wealth in the literature about pre-exhaustion, the effect of this method on EMG of specific muscle has not been fully elucidated. Also, previous studies only analyzed the temporal domain of the EMG signal. Thus, verifying the spectral domain of EMG activity could reveal the behavior of a teeth during the exercise performed on this training method. Therefore, this study aimed to verify the effects of pre-exhaustion method on the electromyography activity in the temporal and spectral domain among different intervals during sets at the seated row exercise. For this, we recruited 20 young males with about 19 years old. They were 12 months without practicing strength training and they did not present any recent history of upper limb musculoskeletal injuries. We collected the EMG activity in the dominant limb using wireless electrodes over the latissimus dorsi, teres maior, biceps brachii, and posterior deltoid muscle. After the sensor placement, the participants performed two sets of 12 repetitions for both pullover exercise and seated row exercise. The cadence of movement was set to two seconds for concentric and two sets of eccentric phase of the movement. Subsequently, the participants performed maximum isometric voluntary contractions of three sets of five seconds for each muscle with nine seconds of rest. Then they rested five minutes and performed two sets of seated row exercise. These two sets was performed in a randomized order. In one set, the participants performed the seated row exercise without pre-exhaustion. In the other, they performed the seated row exercise immediately after the pullover exercise in the with pre-exhaustion condition. There was 20 minutes rest between these both conditions to avoid the fatigue. For data analysis, we calculated the root mean square and the median frequency using the first two repetitions, two intermediate repetitions, and two final repetitions. And then we normalized these values by mean of maximum voluntary isometric contractions of each muscle. For the statistical analysis, we calculated six multivariate analyses of variance with one factor, which was pre-exhaustion, and two dependent variables, which were root mean square and median frequency. The significance level was set to 0.05. 
So here in these graphics, letter A represents the two initial repetitions, letter B, two intermediate repetitions, and letter C, two final repetitions of each set. The Y label shows the percentage of myelectric activity, and X label shows the far analyzed muscle, latissimus darsi, teres maior, biceps brachii, and posterior deltoid. White bars represents without pre-exhaustion condition, and the gray bar represents with pre-exhaustion condition. Regarding the root mean square, our results showed no difference for any of the analyzed intervals. On the other hand, regarding median frequency, our results showed difference in the initial, intermediate, but no difference for final repetitions. The univariate analysis showed that in the condition of pre-exhaustion, the teres maior and the posterior deltoid decreased their frequency in the initial and intermediate repetitions. So our main results support the premise that muscle fatigue induces a reduction in firing rate. Uh, however, in the final repetitions, there was no reduction in the median frequency. Probably, it happened because the participants realized maximum effort in both conditions, reaching the same level of fatigue in the last repetitions. Moreover, the results of the current study disagree with the hypothesis of pre-exhaustion method, which believes that using unarticular exercise before a mood joint exercise could fatigue and promote a higher recruitment of the agonist muscle. So we conclude that besides the pre-exhaustion method seems to generate more fatigue in some muscle compared to conventional sets, it is ineffective to increase the EMG activity of target muscle. So this is my research team, and we want to thank you for the International Society of Biomechanics in Sports for the opportunity to present our study in 2020 online conference. Also, this is my email address and also my Twitter. Uh, feel comfortable to send me a message if you need any further information. And once again, thank you.